Bibles, please. Turn to 1 Chronicles chapter number 29. We'll start there tonight. And um, I'm going to uh, talk about a word here tonight. Uh, 1 Chronicles 29. And um, we'll look at it. Please, you got your Bibles, please. As long as I've been preaching, since I was 19 years old, I've never done a whole message or lesson on this one word. Many, many similar, but not just on this one word. And you're going to be shocked to find out this word is only in the Bible three times. Once in the Old Testament, twice in the New Testament. The two times it's mentioned in the New Testament is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. So only once talking about normal people, the rest of us. First Chronicles 29, 5. The gold for things of gold, the silver for things of silver, and for all manner of work to be made by the hands of artificers. And who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord. The word back there is consecrate. Now I want to talk about consecration. You hear people, preachers mention that once in a while, but you never hear a whole study or lesson. Let's study about consecration. Take your Bible, turn to Hebrews chapter number 7, and I'll show you the other two times it's in the Bible. You would think it would be in there more, only two other times. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse number uh, 28. And then in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 20. Let's look first to Hebrews 7 and verse 28. For the law maketh men high priest which have infirmity, but the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the Son, that be Jesus, who is consecrated forevermore. Chapter 10. Look at chapter 10. And verse number uh, 20, 10, 20. It says here, By a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. The word consecration. You don't hear much about this in our generation. You don't hear a lot about the day me and you are living in about what we should be doing and could be doing for the Lord. All you hear about now, it's a dangerous gospel being preached out there today is all this God wants to do this for you and God wants to do that for you and you're just so awesome. He just wants to be a part of your day and you know, that stuff gets a little weird. That stuff gets a little weird and slowly but surely the emphasis is being placed on I, I go to church because of what God can do for me and uh, uh, that's a shift in, in our in our culture, our society. And it's not biblical. It's not biblical. In the Bible, we serve Him. In the Bible, we give ourselves to Him. You hear a lot of day, hear today about people saying, let Jesus come into your life. You know, that, that's not even right. You don't even have a life. He is your life. You're dead till He comes in and then He gives you life. Uh, I don't mean to be so technical, but if you quit teaching and preaching scripturally, Little by little, every generation gets a little bit further off. And that's exactly what we're seeing today. Uh, I'm studying this church thing. I'm, it's, it's shocking. It's shocking today. And basically what we got today is a bunch of people making a living off a book they don't even believe. And, and tonight, I, I want to talk about our consecration. The word consecration, consecrate means to devote, to separate, dedicate, or set apart for the glory of God. It's, it's almost the same as sanctification. You've heard me preach on that. Here's what sanctification means. I take this book right here, and there's probably 200 song books in here, and I set this one over here and say, this is my song book for my use. Nobody else can use it. This is mine. I have sanctified it. I set it apart for my use. That's what God does for in our life. Now, consecration is the same thing. Consecration means I've set this songbook over here and it's for nobody else's use. It's for none other use but singing in the Lord's house with the Lord's people in the Lord's song. Totally dedicated 
Damn, we got this idea today that uh, uh, somebody, somebody preached that parable where the Lord said some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold, and somehow or another we've left people the impression that uh, there's, there's three or four different kinds of Christians and you just pick whatever one you want to be. If you want to be one of them 30 percenters, that's fine. Uh, if you want to be one of them 60 percent, that's fine. The Lord's okay with that. And uh, it's okay. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, you don't have to go all the way if you don't want to. I mean, he's happy uh, with you if you go 10 or 20. And, and that, that's not right. That's not right. You know what the Lord wants? He wants total surrender. The Lord wants 100 uh, percent. And I'm going to talk about that tonight. And, and, and I know you're probably sitting there saying, now, Brother Danny, he's going to talk about everything. It's fun, and we have to quit this and quit that. No, you, you're looking at it wrong. You're looking at it completely wrong. You, God wants to bless you so much, it's unbelievable, and you're hanging on to stuff to keep him from doing it. You're not, he wants to cheat you. The Lord's not going to cheat you. People hear preachers preach and they think, good night, mean old God wants to take everything away from us. It's fun. If we get right, we're miserable. No, no, the opposite is true. It's just like your kids. The only thing you want to take away from your kids is what? Stuff that'll hurt them, right? That's all you want to take away from your kids. You don't want to take away from your kids stuff that's beneficial, stuff that's healthy, stuff that's profitable for them, only what will hurt them. So it, here's what consecration is. It is giving up ourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. No holding back. No reserve. 100%. It's not really giving of time. I know people, I know people that you preach hard on being dedicated and they'll say, look, uh, I'll give the church $100 Sunday extra. I just want to be a blessing to everybody. That's good. But that ain't what God wants. He don't want your money. He don't want your, he don't want, you say, well, I'll, I'll come out here and mow the grass. That's good. God don't want your time and money. He wants you. If he's got you, there's people give him money just to get him off their back. You know, like you do your wife sometimes. Uh, you know, she's, she's like, honey, I, oh, here's a hundred bucks. Go shopping. I'm tired of hearing it. And, and you know, if you'll admit it, you've done that before just to get her to go on. Or, or maybe you've done your husband like that. That's not really giving, that's not really what she wants. Well, maybe it is. <laughs> she might not have $100, I don't know. Depends on how long you've been married. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, she, uh, the, the, the Lord don't want to say, here's $100, leave me alone. He wants it all. He wants it all. Now, let's talk about that. The decision is who is boss. Who's boss in your life? When you're on the throne, he's down there. When he's on the throne, you're down there. How many know what I'm talking about when they're talking about him on the throne, you on the throne? Everybody in here, this Wednesday night crowd, we got people here, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes Danny gets on the throne. And that th two people can't sit on that throne. I'm telling you, and the Lord, and, and, and sometimes, sometimes I say, all right, Lord, I'm, I'm wrong. You know, every once in a while you see somebody's got this bumper sticker says, says um, God is my co-pilot. <laughs> uh, boy, it puts you up there pretty high, don't it? Uh, uh, you, you, uh, you, that, that puts you in a high position, brother, if God's your co-pilot. I think you better let him be your pilot and you scoot over. Let him drive. All right? Let's talk about this tonight. You ready? Number one, what is consecration? It is yielding my will to God. He don't come into your life. He is your life. The Bible said, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. You don't have a life. You know, it ain't like you got this good thing going and Jesus comes along and joins you on your journey. That's the way they talk now. Uh -uh. Without him, you have no life. You are dead in trespasses and sin. That's why you've got to be born again. You're dead spiritually. So you have no life but in Christ. It's not, it's not uh, some churches who go overboard the other way have this uh, idea that if you have a real set of strict standards and convictions that that means you're consecrated. And I know churches, I'm not 
trying to be ugly. I know churches where all the women, I mean, they dress. I, Lord, I'm thinking in church where they, they wear their dress down to here. No makeup. Don't cut their hair. And they come in there, you know, and, and, the, and the men all dress a certain way. You and nerd drawing us some wicked wild green or something like that. Uh, just a white shirt. And they say, you're consecrated. Now, 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 there's nothing wrong with that. And the Lord knows most churches could use some good lessons on how to dress. Amen. Amen. Lord, help. We ain't no danger going too far to the right. Uh, uh, but, but, according to that, I know people. I know people that say oh, they wear their dresses. They wear their dresses everywhere they go. They're, uh, listen, you know who was more? According to that definition, the Pharisees were consecrated. According to that definition, the Pharisees were more consecrated than anybody. There was, the, the, the Bible said their heart was full of raving and, and wickedness. So it's not just cleaning up the outside. It's not just, and, and listen, when the, it don't do no good clean up the outside if the inside is rotten. You get the inside right, the outside will clean up. And your outside is a picture of what you are inside after a while. If a person... Usually, if a person dresses wicked, they are wicked. Usually. I've heard people say, well, oh, she's a good girl, but she dresses awful wild. If they dress wild, they are wild, nine times out of ten. Amen? And, and, and it's cause, uh, because it's an outward picture of what's in your heart. And, and, but it's not just your clothes. Lord, if that, if that was true, all we'd have to do is cover up and dress right and hallelujah, we'd be full of the Holy Ghost. It's not just that. What is it? It's not just clothes. It's not just being separated. It's not. All that's included. You get consecrated, you will be separated. You get consecrated, you will dress right and act right. But just, just not going here and not going there, not participating in this, not participating in that, is, that's not what it is. The Pharisees were the strictest group of people in his day. And the Lord said, you're a bunch of hypocrites. So what is it? Who can be consecrated? Number two, anybody. Anybody that's been saved. Not just for Bible scholars, not just for the aged, not just for the experienced, not just for the talented, not just for the rich. Uh, we used to have, we still have, singers come to church and... Uh, Remember the Nail family? When the Nail family came and that one lady was one of the aunts, I used to love to hear them sing. Lordy mercy. When that, uh, that girl get up here, the lady, she passed away, you know, and she get up here and sang, uh, what was that song I like to hear sing? Uh, from the dust of the earth. That uh, 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 I was born to serve the Lord. It tired me up. It tired me up. And it wasn't because of their talent. It wasn't because of their talent. It wasn't because of their equipment. They didn't bring in a bunch of guitars and, and, and fancy equipment. They'd just get up here and sing on these mics right here. It would tear me up. People would start hitting the altar, tears all over the... Listen, that's what consecration is. And a lot of times we, people look at them and say, boy, I'd miss Kerr. Same way she used to get up here. People say, I'd love to be that. that no. Listen, it's not just for singers. It's not just for preachers. You want me to tell you who it's for? Romans 12, 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice. That's what consecration is. And I'm going to get more to that in a minute. You know what consecration is? Consecration is me giving God this body. That's what he wants. Your body, a living sacrifice. You say, well, you, it, it's already his, ain't it? Yes, it is. He owns it. But you've got a choice whether you're going to give him Give it to him or hold it back. Give it to him, hold it back every day. That's why Paul said, I die daily. He said, I get up every morning and say, all right, Paul, you're dead. The Lord has this body. Now, I've been thinking about this, y'all, and I've been thinking, I'm burdened. I'm burdened for our church. I'm burdened for people that's not here tonight. I'm burdened for people that's cold and backslid. And, and, and you know what? You know what the Lord told me? I, I mean, not in an audible voice, but in my heart, you know what I feel like he told me? He said, Brother Danny, all you can do is get your heart as right as you can possibly get it, and you give yourself 100% to me, and I'll do the work. And I'm doing that by the grace of God. I want to give myself to the Lord. I don't want to hold back. Now, I'm not trying to sound spiritual. I'm not. I, I want to give everything 
to God. Now, some of y'all sitting there tonight and you're saying, Brother Danny, I can't say that. I can't say that. There's parts of my life I'm holding back and I know I'm holding back and all that. Well, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. I'm just trying to say that's what consecration is. Give it all to him. Give it all to him. Try holding back and see how that works for you. You'll regret it. All right? Appeal to consecration. What is the Bible appeal? How does God appeal to us? I beseech you by the mercies of God that you'll present your bodies a living desire. You know what he's saying? Look, look how merciful God's been to you. Look how good God's been to you. Look at the times you could have got killed. Look at the times you could have got hurt. You could be in the hospital tonight. You could be, you could be gasping for breath in the emergency room tonight. You could be in the back of an ambulance tonight on your way to the hospital. Is it too much to ask God to give yourself to him after he's been merciful to you? Listen, people, there's people in other countries dying with AIDS and going to burn in hell after that. We ain't no better than they are. No better. Maybe worse. I'm telling you, God's been merciful to us. He has been merciful to us. Consecration is, brother, it is, it is uh, uh, it, it's an appeal to us. All right, now let's talk about the act, the act of consecration. How do you do it? Present your bodies. Present your bodies. Let's do it tonight like a gift, like a present. He owns it anyway. Go ahead and give it to him. It is an act of worship. God wants you. How many, how many times have you heard preachers say this? God don't want your ability. He wants your availability. God don't want your talent. He wants your... You say, well, I'll come up and play the piano once in a while. Uh, Miss Desi goes, plays the piano, does a great job. We appreciate that. But that ain't the only reason she comes to church. I hope she'd come to church even if she didn't play, and I believe she would. I believe if her, all her fingers got broke, she'd still come to church. I, I hope that if I can't preach, I still want to go to church. It's, you don't, it's not like, it, it, it's not like he, he don't want your talent, he wants you. If he's got you, he's got your talent. People say, give God your wallet. And I tell you, you give him your body, he'll have your wallet. He'll have them tithes and an offering. He'll have a special gift from you once in a while. He sure will. He wants your availability. Like Abraham. You know what Abraham did when he went up there to offer up his son? I mean, he was willing to give God everything. That's what, that's what consecration is. Now, the argument for it. The Bible said it's your reasonable service. A Christian, that's right, gladly yields himself to serve God. I know, what some, I know what a lot of young people think. They think that's just too much. That's asking too much. Look, I go to church on Sunday. I, I, a matter of fact, I go to church on Sunday night. I even go Wednesday night once in a while. Or I even go, look, it's, you're, you're asking me to give him my Saturdays? Yes. You're asking me to give him my Friday nights? Yes. You're asking me to give him my... And that don't mean you have to come up here and dig a ditch around the church all day on Saturday. But that means whatever you do Saturday, it's for him and in his will and for his glory. That's what it means. I don't care if you go fishing or whatever. Uh, be right with God. In other words, you don't go out with a bunch of wicked people and fish on Saturday and drink beer on the lake and then come Sunday and say, okay, God, now I'm going to give you today. That ain't the way it works. It, you, give him, you give him your all. Give him your all. I believe there's thousands of people sit in church every Sunday in church and have never given the Lord everything. Never, never. They say it's too hard. Was it too hard for Abraham? Was it too hard for Joseph? Was it too hard for Moses who left the palaces of Egypt to go out here and suffer with, with God's people and deliver them? Here's the way I look at it. You're not going to hell when you die. Good night. It ain't going to hurt us to serve him and give him our life while we're here. Amen? You know what people want? People say, well, I want to live like a sinner and enjoy the world, and then I want Jesus wait, welcoming me home when I leave here. And that ain't the way it works. That is just not the way it works, y'all. Um, what, what do you consecrate? What do you consecrate? You consecrate your body. It's his already. He gets all of it. How You say, well, what does that mean, preacher? That means I'll just come up here. You know what it means. It means give it to him. Give it to him. 
be careful what you put in it. Be careful what you put on it. Be careful where you let it go. Uh, it's a sin. I mean, uh, to abuse the temple. Your body's the temple of the Holy Spirit. So if my body's the temple of the Holy Spirit, I'm supposed to treat it right. That's why you're not supposed to deal with drugs, alcohol, uh, abuse your body. I think some of them guys... Some of the athletes, I think, abuse their body. I know that. Some of them football players, probably basketball players, and live off steroids, and, and they get all built up and all look like a skint frog. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody looks like that. <laughs> nobody looks like that normally. You say, well, I know a guy lifted weights, and he's cut. Listen, they lifted weights when I was growing up, and they didn't look like that. Them, 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 they're doing something besides lifting weights. Uh, to make you look like a, I mean, so defined and so carved out. I know, ladies, it looks good. He's got the six-pack, and he'll have the whole case in a few years uh, when he quits uh, steroids. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, I, I understand that. But listen, you can abuse your body. You can abuse your body. You can abuse your body by, you can abuse your body by working too much. Whew. Lord, I shouldn't say that. That's what you've been waiting on, I know. Hallelujah, preacher, I don't have to do nothing. Uh, we're in no danger of that. Uh, I've known people that have overworked. My daddy did. My daddy worked himself to death. And, and there are people like that. But you can work too much. You should, I'm bad for that. Uh, somebody asked me, they said, when do you take a day off, Brother Danny? And I got to think, and I said, I don't take a day off. And really, that's not good. Every once in a while... You ought to take, on my day off, I want to go do something. I can't imagine sitting in the house all day. Now, the day may come when I have to. Lord have mercy. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine staying in the bed till 11, 12, 1. I, I can't imagine that. I can't imagine. I, I, unless, <laughs> unless you're sinning, you're sinning half the night, you might do that. On your phone or TV or something, you're sinning. But, but, maybe not. I, or we go on the bus route and they, they come and they can't even open their eyes and it's 12 o'clock, come to the door like this. I said, man, it's too, it'd be a sin to stay in the day. Sun's shining and, and everything. So it's wrong, it's wrong to pet it, but it's wrong to abuse it. Um, here's, here I go, I'm going to say it. I'm under conviction. You be careful what you put in it, how you eat. Now, here's my excuse. I ain't convinced that all this stuff they say is bad for you is really bad for you. I ain't convinced. Show me different. There are some stuff that really is bad, like, like pork and ribs. I ain't convinced that's bad for you. Huh? Pepsi. We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> Always some smart aleck in the crowd trying to make the preacher feel guilty so they can live like the devil. Huh? <laughs> yeah. What about that rule king popcorn in there every day? Uh huh. <laughs> popcorn is worse for you than pork barbecued ribs. Well, who can eat it without salt? Look, if they eat a baked potato without salt, just eat, eat, just eat that piece of paper. It's, it's, it's same, it tastes the same, just eat dirt. <laughs> I, I went to eat with this preacher one time. He said, I'm on a no-salt diet. And he, I said, shoo, how do you eat that? He said, it's, I, my wife will kill. I said, man, just eat dirt. You don't have to pay for it. Uh, but... I here's my belief. I believe if you sweat enough that some salt is good. I have scripture. Jesus said salt is good. That's what he said. Jesus said it. He didn't say it's good for you. <laughs> he said it's good. And I say amen. amen. No, and I mean this seriously. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. 
you, when you sweat, you sweat out all that stuff, and you sweat a lot. You got to sweat a lot. I'm telling you one thing, I sweat a lot. I mean, twice a day, usually, hard. I did yesterday yesterday morning bad, and yesterday evening bad. Me and Ethan played one-on-one -on -one for 40, 45 minutes last night, and I was wringing wet when we got through. Anthony comes over, and we play 21 uh, before it gets dark, and uh, and then I played, I played basketball this morning for about an hour and sweat hard. That justifies me eating Fritos and chips. And see, glucose, when you drink Gatorade, the glucose stuff, all that is, Pepsi and Gatorade, same thing, if you sweat enough. <laughs> Say amen right there. Hallelujah. Did you feel the spirit when I said that? I'm just, no. Nah. I had a man tell me the other day that Gatorade was bad for you. He did, really did. He was drunk. It's the truth. It's the truth. He's over here. To, I come in after playing ball and I was buying Gatorade. He said, that stuff's bad for you. I said, I said thank you, Dr. Oz. I'll remember that. Uh, <laughs> health doctor. Jack LaLanne, the famous, whatever he was, fitness guru, 97, brother, 94, he'd still work out and do push-ups and jumping jacks and everything. And they asked him, they said, tell us what's good to eat. And he said, I could, you can write a whole big list, write a book. Basically, it's this. If it tastes good, spit it out. Bad for you. And that's because of the curse of sin. Ain't that what the, the world... And I, and I had ice cream last night. I did. But I don't think a little... <laughs> I think all things in moderation. Seriously, I don't think sugar's bad for you. You might disagree with me as long as you don't eat it all the time. And too much. That's my opinion. And I believe this. Everybody's body's different. I believe some things that might hurt one person don't hurt another. This is not a lesson on food. This is a lesson on consecrating your body. But I'll tell you one thing. Beer and cigarettes and, and carbohydrates and sugar and sugar is more and just piling in and, and salt is not Good for it. I can tell you that. In moderation, maybe some things. I think in moderation, sugar or salt, my opinion, this doctor there is 90 years old, lived off fat back and country ham, biscuits and gravy, still goes out and works in the garden. I don't know. Uh, it, we're not going to study about that tonight, but we will. Then. Somebody want to ask a question or make a comment? The Bible says sugar is good. <laughs> no, it don't. It says honey. I think if is you can take cereal and put honey on it. I do that. That's all right, ain't it? Honey ain't good for you. Come on now. How you know you're allergic to it? <laughs> how do you know you're allergic to stuff? I mean, I've had people tell me that. I don't know how you know. You don't, that might have just happened anyway, you reckon? Headache? Uh-huh. That beats all I've heard. Because honey is like the perfect food. They say you don't even digest honey. It, you don't. Even, it's the only thing you don't digest. How's that bees do that? That's weird, isn't it? Huh? There you go. That's a good verse right there. Yeah, you eat too much anything. Mom, my mom was always saying, "Boy, this is gonna make me fat." I'm like, I'm eating this, and Daddy say, "Too much anything will make you fat." <laughs> That's what he always said. You know, you keep. Uh, you eat, you eat, uh, eat just a, just a lettuce. So oh, I'm eating salad. Oh, I'm eating salad. And then you put that thousand calories of salad dressing and, and meat and everything else in it. And and I've I've seen people. I've been to eat with people. Get a get a Big Mac and French fries and then a Diet Coke. Yeah. Like like that makes it all right. Uh, uh, which I don't. I think. My opinion, I think diet drinks are worse for you than regular ones. As far as your health, that's my opinion. I might be wrong. I'm not a doctor. 
Don't nobody take what I'm saying as medical advice, but that's because that stuff that, that stuff tastes. There's something in them things that tastes weird. I don't know what it is. It tastes. I can taste it. I can taste it an hour after I drink. I just drink water before I drink diet drink. That's your business. Drink whatever you want to, as long as it ain't fermented. Anybody else? What's that? Fake sugar? Cancer. I tell you one thing, and we'll finish this in a second. I tell you one thing. I know. I remember when I was growing up. My, if we, my member plain as day. If mom brought brought a, a jug of milk, if you didn't drink it in a couple of days, it soured. And now you can leave milk in your refrigerator for a week. That's mm-hmm. something they're putting in. Bread the same way. If you didn't eat bread, if you didn't eat bread, like when it, before all these people came, <laughs> we do Anthony, Ethan, Molly, and all the Opie and all them. We keep a loaf of bread for a while. Now, a loaf of bread will last a week. They're putting something in them. Those preservatives. That's what they say. I don't know that. I wouldn't doubt it. Well, somebody help me with this. I eat. <laughs> I don't think it hurts you. I uh, I buy apples. I eat an apple every day. Almost almost every day I eat an apple. And almost every day a banana. But at least five days a week, and usually six, I eat an apple. Usually. Missed once in a while. Apple a day keeps the doctor away. Doritos a day keeps everybody a day, every way. Uh, and and you know what? Everybody says, that, or get them organic. I get mine at the flea market from this Mexican lady. And she's really nice, and I witness to her every, every time I go. And... Uh, uh, Everybody says they're organic ones. And then I heard somebody say that organic stuff really ain't no better than other stuff. I just don't spray it as much or something. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all pray about it. Anybody else want to say something right quick before we move on? Let's finish this. This is not a sermon on food. About your body, though, you should be careful. Overeating is a sin. I know that for a fact. The Bible calls it what? Gluttony. I've heard them preachers. Preachers get up and blast everybody for drinking beer in their belly will reach that pulpit from right here. And and uh, uh, most of them, most of them. And I made up my mind, Lord, don't let me get like that. I don't want it. Or maybe my God is my belly. I have count meetings and eat four times a day. Four times a day, brother. And 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 I've heard them laugh about fasting and and uh, uh, make fun of people fasting and, and, and joke about uh, that ain't, that ain't right. That ain't right. Eating too much is bad for you. You know what I heard one say one time? What's the definition of glutton? When you throw up. Mm-hmm. If you eat so much you throw up, you've glutted. Yeah. What's, is that, somebody tell me the real definition of glutton. How do you know when you overate? <laughs> <laughs> You're hurting. You have to do like this. Uh, uh, is that like about an hour? I know it. I know it. I know when I overeat. Every time I go to the Golden Crown. Every time. And I tell myself, I'm not going to do it this time. I one plate, and then I go back and get two plates, and then I get desserts, and two or three, you know, pies. And, and at the end of my mind, I'm saying, I'm $13, bless God. I'm going to get my $13. And I just get meat, 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 and I'm a meatitarian. And uh, no, and I believe it's sin to eat vegetables when you pay that much. But anyway, uh, uh, I, and then I wind up hurting the rest of the day. Anybody else? Right quick. <laughs> no, it's not a sin to eat vegetables. I was kidding. It's, it's, it's a... They pick out the one part I'm joking about to obey and ignore the other 90%. <laughs> My daughters did that too. Uh, you know what? Uh, good night. What was I talking about? You're, uh, 
you, you do know, I mean, you know, uh, I heard Dr. Ruckman say one time, said, uh, if you really want to get slim and trim, drink a whole glass of water before you eat, and then eat an apple like I do. I eat an apple before I eat every day at like 12.30. Then you don't want as much. And then eat less portion. When you, before you start feeling full, stop. Right before you, if you wait till you feel full, I mean, after about an hour, it keeps getting bigger and bigger in there. It swells. So, uh, so stop before you get full. That's easier said than done, ain't it? That's easy to preach and hard to practice, brother. But let's, let me say this, and I, I, we've got to go. I know the kids didn't get to go outside tonight, so they're, they're going to be ready to go here in a minute. What, you consecrate your body, your talents, your money, your physical strength. Um, your, uh, be careful, little hands, you know, what you do. Uh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be, you know, everybody knows that little song. Be careful, little feet, where you go. That's a perfect example of what I'm talking about tonight. Be careful, little feet, where you go. Don't go into a, a movie theater where, where there's a, a dirty movie. And they ain't no clean ones, one out of a hundred maybe. Don't go into a, a place where there's, uh, my opinion, you, you, if you do this, it's your business. And I'm not saying you're sinning. I don't like to go even to a restaurant where I feel like I'm in a bar. I don't. I, I, everybody around you, I have drunk. And other, you say, well, I like them wings. Well, get them to go, man. Uh, get, I, I'm not trying to tell you where to go eat or not because, I, I mean, I go, there, you go to a place that's a big city, everybody sells alcohol. But if, at least there should be a room over here. You know, you don't have to sit at the bar, thank God, or, or near it. Uh, Consecrate yourself, uh, your abilities, your ability to speak, teach, minister, play an instrument, uh, nurse people, electrician, uh, plumber, carpenter, uh, whatever you can do, whatever you can do. I'm going I'm to sum this up by saying this. Here's the, here's the whole lesson in one nutshell. Amen, Frankie? Tell it, brother. Uh, here's the whole lesson in a nutshell. If I had 100 acres of land, if I had 100 acres of land and a man come and said, I want to buy your land. And I said, okay, I'll sell it to you. And we agreed on a price. And I said, I want to keep one acre. All right, he said, I get 99. My one acre is right in the middle of it. And the law in most states say that if I sell a man 100 acres of land, 90 acres of land, it's all around mine, he has to let me have right away to it. Right? And that's the way it is in most most. You can't just be locked in where you can't get to your own land. There's got to be, there's a right of way to it. That is exactly what I'm talking about tonight. We say, I give the Lord my heart, but we got that one little place that we got access to. And we say, I give him everything but that. My goodness, most people out partying don't even go to church. I give him everything but that. That's what I'm talking about tonight, but that. It's your music. Is it a habit? Is it somebody you, you're around you shouldn't be around? Is it lust? Is it pride? Think you're it? Is it money? Is it yourself? Well, I was talking about exercise a minute ago. There's nothing wrong with exercise. Bodily exercise profits little, but some people go crazy with it. They worship their body. And they all they put pictures of themselves and all the, you know, all over. Lord have mercy. Uh, you got that one little spot, uh, spot of land that you won't give to him? That's what he wants. I asked myself that question in my closet this evening. I said, Lord, is there anything in my life that you want? And immediately, I thought, like, like us playing ball, so sometimes I think, man, I, I like basketball too much. I like it. I'd rather play a game of basketball than eat a steak. I mean that. Any, I enjoy it. I just enjoy it. it. It's good for the mind, body, and everything. But I thought, Lord, if you want me to cut, cut, cut back, I think, I think a certain amount of exercise is good for you, but you should be careful. Now, you don't need to go to the gym five days a week and six days a week and just go crazy. And, and believe me, I'm not, I'm not doing it for muscles. Nobody, nobody goes, I got them. But, <laughs> but, but, they're, but they're, 
you know, I'm, that's not why I do it. I, I do it because I enjoy it. But some people do it just so they can look good. And I just wonder about that. And then I wonder about the way I eat and the way I spend my time. And do I pray enough? And the Lord's dealing with me. He's dealing with me. Now, I'm going to ask you, is he dealing with you? I'll read this and I'm through. Come on, Miss Desi. Would I be called a Christian if everybody knew my secret thoughts and feelings and everything I do? Or could they see the likeness of Christ in me each day? Or could they hear him speaking in everything I say? Would I be called a Christian if everybody know that I am found in places where Jesus would not go? Or could they hear his echo in every song I sing, in eating, drinking, dressing? Can they see Christ my King? Would I be called a Christian if judged by what I read, by all my recreations and every thought and deed? Could I be counted Christ-like and now I work and pray unselfish, kind, forgiving to others every day? God wants us to be consecrated. Who is willing to consecrate himself? Let's stand. And if you want to come and pray tonight, we'll come and pray around the altar. Just get around the altar and pray. If you want to pray right there at your seat, that's fine. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask myself the same question. Who is willing to consecrate their self to the Lord? Come on. If you want to come and pray at the altar, come on. If you want to pray there at your seat, that's fine. Uh, just come on right now. Oh, God. Oh, God.